Tony Huber Syndrome, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a hundred hours long! Hey everyone, welcome to the show! Next Gen is here, but I have been all in on the Assassin's Creed Valhalla review, which should be going up in a few days, I apologize for the delay. It is a one hundred hour long game, I did all of the main quests, I did not skip any dialogue, so it was just a full, complete playthrough. There's still a hundred million things to do in this game all over the map, but I want to dive in to some of the things that I really love about it. First up, this is not just Assassin's Creed. This is for so many games moving forward. No loading. I shouldn't say no loading, I should say minimal loading. But this is so huge. This changed the way I played this game. And I am so excited for open world games moving forward to just not have to deal with loading. Uh, there are multiple regions in this game that you can travel to. Obviously all of the viewpoints and just being able to freely fast travel back and forth. Even if something was so close, I would just fast travel anyway because it was so instant. It was so fast and it just, I, my mind just keeps racing with how this is going to change the way we play moving forward. I know that sounds like some marketing PR thing, but it's really not. Uh, just no loads, out of control, 10 out of 10, next gen, we are here. By Odin, the Nithin curse is lifted. Next up are the pillars of each zone, and those are wealth, mysteries, and artifacts. I really like the exploration in Valhalla. Obviously, that has a lot to do with England and Norway. I just love these environments. Obviously, I've always loved Vikings. Exploring now is just so addicting. So, wealth will be on the map. There are bright yellow spots and light yellow spots. The light yellow spots are more just like crafting resources, but the big ones are gear and weapons and rare crafting resources. So, every time you see one of these, you're really compelled to get it, not only for the dopamine of being a completionist, but also because you want to get new weapons and new gear and you want to try that out. So I just really liked the way they did it this time around. And then of course there are the mysteries, which are smaller side quests. And I love that these don't show up in your quest log. It puts an immediacy on them, it puts an agency on them, where you really gotta pay attention to what the characters are saying. It grounds you, it, it makes you focus on it in the moment instead of just adding things to your quest log and checking boxes and worrying about it later. You know, every time you come up to a mystery, whether it is a actual side quest or, you know, just a smaller one like building a Karen statue or an offering, you really are pulled to the objective in that moment and I really appreciate that. And then of course the smaller ones, which are just the artifacts, like chasing tattoo recipes down, or my favorite is finding the Roman artifacts to give back to your settlement, which will be our next one, settlement. The settlement is so hype. I am obsessed with this. It's like Monte Regioni in Assassin's Creed 2, or your pirate settlement in Assassin's Creed 4, or the train and syndicate. It's been a while. You know, we didn't really have anything in Origins or Odyssey to invest in, and this Viking settlement is so addicting. You'll wander around and people will give you quests to go on. Uh, you can have all your shops here. This blacksmith is the only one who can upgrade the rarity of your equipment, so it makes him more meaningful. It makes returning to base more meaningful. You can have feasts that give you buffs. You can go on raids to get resources, which then tie back into upgrading your settlement. It's just one of the most addicting properties of this game, and I love that about Assassin's Creed, when everything feeds in on itself, especially the settlements. I just remember going around in Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood and just upgrading all those shops. Well, this is the evolution of that. I love seeing how far we've come in this series comparing things from the older Assassin's Creed's to the newer ones 
And this is a high point, definitely, of investing in a settlement. Do you think it is a serious wound? And lastly are the choices. We're not into the Bioware Witcher 3 level of consequences yet, but I think it's a huge step up from Odyssey, and the RP is there. So many of the choices I made in this game stayed with me on a personal level. I know they didn't affect the game outcome too much, I've looked into that, but the RP of it all really stayed with me. I don't want to give anything away, I want to get into spoilers, because obviously the choices are the most spoilery, but I made some bad decisions throughout. I also made some really, really good ones. I think I got the good ending, the best ending possible. So there's that. But along the way, some mistakes were made. And one night, I'm not even kidding, I lost sleep. I lost sleep at night because I made one of the worst decisions possible. Someone lost their life because of my botch. So I felt the guilt. And when a game can actually make me feel that way, then it's doing something right. So that's it for the episode. Those were my quick takes on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. You will have my in-depth analysis in the coming days when I finish the review. I'm just working hard on that. If you are in the other regions of the world, congratulations. PS5 launches today if you're watching on Thursday. So that's exciting. And until next time, I'll see you then. Love and respect.